Last Friday we made it very much clear that in the personality of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam, his seerah is much more important, which is the second fundamental source of Islamic law. Not only to celebrate his birth date, our birthday, because that was a practice which was not known neither to Sahaba, nor to Tabi'een, nor to Atba'u Tabi'een until 7th century. And by doing so, we are actually going to forget his seerah. And we devote ourselves only to a love by tongue or to a haqeedah and admiration. My dear respected brothers and sisters, now, the important point is that each and every messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is chosen by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And as you know, the entity of Allah is a perfect entity. So he has chosen perfect personalities for his message. And that's why their brought of was taking place under the eyes of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Most of them, they did not have their fathers to take care of them. Either the father of a messenger was a kafir and disbeliever like Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam or someone he was taken out of the house of his parents like Musa and he got his brought up there in the house of Pharaoh the enemy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Prophet Jesus as you know that he had no any father he was born of his only mother and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam he was born as an orphan three or four months before his birth his father Abdullah when he was on a business trip to Syria he passed away there in Medina my dear respected brothers and sisters we have to pick up the bottom line that father was not there no any proper tarbiyah was given by a father to such a person. So who was taking care of? Only Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Allah has mentioned that in the story of Musa. Little meaning of the ayah is that you may be manufactured under our eyes little meaning and as you know manufacturing is a process so it means a process was going on as far as the brought up of a prophet or messenger was concerned respected brothers and sisters and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when the people of Makkah making objection to the message of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam or to holy Quran as well that he fabricates it he makes it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, if he can make it and he is totally an illiterate person, never been in a school or madrasa, he has never picked up a pen in his hands. If he can say such like thing, why you not the literate people who are well known in Arabia for their poetry, for their literature, even in the tafsir of Holy Quran, we do exploit the words used by the literate people of the time of Jahiliya. We call it Divan al Arab. It means that regarding language, they were authentic authority. My dear respected brothers and sisters, now it will make sense to you that in the time of Musa alayhi salatu wasalam, the magic and sorcery was on its peak. So Allah gave him such a mojiza and miracle which defeated the sorcerers of that time, you know that. In the time of Jesus, alayhi salatu wasalam, the medical education or the medicines or the treatment, that was on its peak. 
but there were two types of disease one that is called birds a skin disease you know that and the second one if somebody was born blind of his mother there is no treatment for such like two diseases so allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he gave these two miracles to prophet jesus to defeat the expertise of the time in the time of rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam literature was on its peak poetry was on its peak so allah gave him the mujiza of quran and he challenged the people wa in kuntum fi rayb mimma nazzalna ala abdina fatu bi surat min misli not 114 not even 14 only one short surah the like of surah al asr or surah al kawsar and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that i am not going to challenge a person individually what wa shuhadaakum invite and call upon your expertise and literate people who have got the nobel prize for their literature they can join you so you may complete the book of allah then allah says fa illam tafalu if you have not done it yet in these 10 13 long years so how you can do it in future wa lam tafalu allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says nobody can do it under until the day of judgment and as i mentioned time and again they Holy Quran has millions and billions of enemies every time every time and in each and every generation and they are making comments are giving comments are remarks passing remarks against Quran and Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam have they ever tried to make a book the like of that if they will they cannot because Allah said wala tafa'lu he has deprived them of the same power he has deprived humanity of the same power they how a makhluk and creature can compete the creator how the word and speech of a creature can compete the words and speech of the creator does it make sense wala taf'alu so respected brothers and sisters in islam anyhow is a matter of belief this is our belief that muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam he is the perfect ever personality in the creature of allah and in human being as well and not only that he is the seal of the prophet that is not only the case of time that he came in the end of that procedure but that is the case of kamal and attribute as well that he is as perfect that no any perfect personality like him has to come after him cannot come so my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam that is one point we call it khatm e nabuwa zamani and khatm e nabuwa zati khatm e nabuwa zamani the time wise he came in the end of the process and zati means that perfection wise he is the perfect ever personality in the creature of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so doesn't make sense that somebody else will come my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam now the perfect personality he got a title of khatam un nabiyyi ma kana muhammad naba hadim min rijalikum ولكن رسول الله هو خاتم النبيين as you know that somebody at some time we do arrange a program and the speakers are coming and they are giving their words and their speeches and in the end we call him the keynote speaker and that is the end of the story so you can say on the stage of this world allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he was bringing speakers adam noah abraham moses jesus giving the same message on behalf of Allah when the keynote speaker prophet muhammad came that was the end of the stage the job is done you know what i'm saying uh-huh. my dear respected brothers and sisters in islam now as you know that and maybe you have read and studied somewhere in the books that the messenger of the time is number one the handsome ever person of his time number one number two he has been very elegant person of his time now that is a case because certain mufassirin they have mentioned that musa alai salatu wassalam he had something in his tongue he was not speaking very well that is wrong that that's a story that is wrong he was an eloquent person his only problem was that he was a man of strong character and he was becoming angry very soon and as you know that when you become angry the muscles shrink 
the Muslim said, and that why he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, my brother Harun, he is a very patient person. If you will send him along with me, then the work will be going on properly. Because when I become angry, at that time I am unable to speak, I want to sleep. Yes, and that's why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given him a mojiza and miracle of strong character as well. You know what I'm saying? Because the kafir of that time, Pharaoh, he was a shaitan kafir. Yes, having big force and big authority and big power. But Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he used to come. Yes, and he used to throw his stick on the ground. Yes, just handle it. And he was saying, just hold it. Please, please hold it. So Musa alayhi salatu wa salam, he used to hold it. The paytan, he said, now listen to me what I'm saying. So anyhow, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, the point is that a messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the eloquent person of his own time. He is the handsome person of his own time. He is the bravest person of his own time. That's a perfection. Yes, and as we mentioned, that Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is the perfect ever person in the creation of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. So now we have to mention a little bit about this because there are two things. Number one is called Surah. Number one is called, number two is called the Sina. Surah means the complexion, the features, it's the outer look. And Sina means the inner sight, the qualities, the attributes. So how were the features of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam? How was the outer look of Muhammad? Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Yes, put Sahaba on a side now. We are talking about a Bidwan lady of Banu Khuzaba. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, at the time of Hijrah to Medina, he was passing by his tent in a desert. She was living there. At that time, Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Abu Bakr and Amir ibn Fuhera. Amir ibn Fuhera. He was the liberated slave of Sayyidina Abu Bakr radiyallahu ta'ala an. He was one of the famous Sahaba of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He was the one who was sent amongst the Qurra and the Da'is for the belief to a specific tribe and they killed him. And Amr ibn Fuhira radiyallahu ta'ala an. His dead body, it was lifted up by the angels. Even the Amir of that area, he was asking someone that who was that guy because we saw a piece of cloud lifted up his dead body and he is gone so Amir ibn Fuhira radiyallahu ta'ala an number one and number two Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi sallam and Abu Bakr these three people and some other joined them as well but they were actually the leaders Prophet sallallahu alayhi sallam was the leader and these two accompanied him from Mecca all the way so when they were passing by they were hungry a little bit so when they saw a lady is there, they said, Salaam Alaikum or whatever the tahiyya was. So anyhow, then Abu Bakr was yallahu ta'ala an, he asked the lady, if you have anything in your tent or house to eat, she said, I'm a very poor lady. I have nothing, neither for eating nor for drink. The only thing I can offer that is water. And I'm living here with my husband Abu Ma'bad but he has taken the goats and lambs and he is coming almost every 7-10 days and bring the, 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 the goats and the lambs back so Abu Bakr ta'ala, he saw a goat there standing very weak and very naive so anyhow he asked Umm Ma'bad ta'ala, what about this goat so she said oh that is sick Dead, dead goat cannot move, cannot walk, that's why she is home. So Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam asked her, if you will allow us, said, what for? To slaughter it? Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, no, to take milk from this. She has not given any birth to any baby, how you will take milk in the air? Prophet sallallahu alayhi said, if you will allow us. She said, okay. Prophet Sallallahu says, you have any part or something? So she brought a part. Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi said, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And the order, he touched it. And he pumped out. Then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi he filled up their part. 
Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam asked her if you have any other part, any other part, and all the parts she brought to Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And they got filled up with milk. And then Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam once again touched the order, it went up as it was before. And then Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he drank, Abu Bakr drank, Abir ibn Fuhaira drank, other people they drank, and he left a lot of milk with so, in so many parts with Umm Ma'bat al When her husband came, so he said, where from this milk came? So she said, oh, you don't know Abu Ma'bat. Today, that was a blessing day. That was a day of mercy. You don't know what happened. She said, tell me. Don't make suspense. Just tell me. What happened? So she told him, that some people were passing by your tent. They came to my tent asking for some food and drinks. Nothing was there. They asked me if I can allow them to have milk of this girl. Abu Ma, this girl? She said, yes, this girl. She said, where from the milk came? She said, from the same boat. From this girl. Oh, sahib Quraysh. I have never seen him, but people are talking of him. Maybe that is the companion of the Quraysh, companion of the Quraysh tribe, because the people in Arabia they used to call him Sahib of Quraysh, the companion of Quraysh. Maybe that was the companion of Quraysh where they went. Umm Mabad said, "I don't know, but they were going towards Yasser like this, on this way." Yes. So Abu Mabad, he became a little bit more eager. He asked his wife, "Can you give me a little bit about him?" how he was looking. So I think that in such a little time, no one else can give such a description of the Prophet of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala as this Bidwan lady gave. And that's why sometimes I say that people who are living in desert, most of the time they are very educated. They are not literate, but they are. There is a big difference between literacy and education. There are literate people, they are not educated. You will say, oh, where from this donkey came? A graduate donkey. Or a PhD donkey. And sometime, you will go somewhere to a desert. Somebody who has never seen any school or madrasa, but the way, the way his character is, the way his attributes are, the way his dealing and treat is surprising. Because he's an educated person. Where from he got that education? Yes, that comes from chest to chest, from heart to heart, from genes to genes, and from generation to generation. If you will come to our area, mean the Pashtun's area, every nation they have their own characters, and every nation is good. There are good and bad people in each and every nation. That is the Walilafi Khalki Hishu'un. But we, in our Pashtun area, we have the Jirga system. And most of the members of Jirga, who are going to decide matters and to decree and to give their opinion. Most of them, they are not literate, literate people. But when they start to speak, so if you are an educated person and you know the modern world, you will be thinking, oh, he is representing this area and you will know on what. The way he is speaking, like, like in, in you and your representative. So anyhow, why? Because when I became I cannot call myself Sheikh, but anyhow, when I got my graduation as a Sheikh. So when I became graduated, yes, that's good. When I became a graduate, so my grandfather used to tell me that just go and sit with the farmers. Just go and sit with these people who are working there in the, in the farms. And those who are sitting in Hujra, we have a community place. Yes, uh, uh, you can say community living room. A community living room, yes. So just go there, listen to them. Because he was telling me, now you are book smart, you have to be a hujra smart. Otherwise, you will not be able to live here in peace. So respected brothers and uh, sisters in Islam, anyhow, you have to sit with people. Because, course, to lafz hi sikate hai, admi admi banate hai. Yes, if you want to be a man, sit with men. Yes, if you want to be a man, Study book, it will never make you bad. Yes, you have to study book. But to be a man, sit with man. We call it sohba. We call it sohba. And that's why when we praise someone, we don't say that he's like this, he's like this, he's like this. 
we say he studied under such and such sheikh. He spent days but time with such and such sheikh. He was the student of Sheikh al-Islam Hadrat al-Badani. Yes, he was there with Imam al-Asr al-Allama and Mershad Kashmiri. Sometime, I am proud of that. Yes, sometime, proud. Right is not good. But I am proud of that, that I was sitting with these great mashayikh like Sheikh al-Hadith Mawlana Abdul Haq sahab rahmatullahi alayh. Ustad al-Hadith Mawlana Abdul Halim sahab nabbar Allahu marqadahu. Sheikh al-Quran Mawlana Abdul Hadi rahmatullahi alayh. Sheikh al-Quran Mawlana Ulamullah Khan rahmatullahi alayh. So, we spend time with these people. Whatever we are, that is because of those great people. Otherwise, man anam ke man danam. We are nothing. So, my dear respected brothers and sisters in Islam, Anyhow, Umm Ma'bad al-Khuzai, رضي الله تعالى عنها, she said, "Zahir al-Wazara, I have never seen such a brightness in the face of anyone." Now look, what a beautiful word said. Yes, he was utmost bright. And number two, Ablaj al-Waj, he had a very broad countenance. And number three, Hassan al-Khulq, he was a man of very noble character. Lam ta'abhu fujda. His belly was not buggering out. His belly was not buggering out. Walam tazabhi soda. Nor he was a bad headed man. That was the description she was giving to her husband. And he said, she said, Wasimun tasimun. His feature I cannot say. What type of feature he had? Fi aimehi ta'ajun. Naturally, his eyes were black. Wafi ashfarihi watafun, and his eyes were arched with the very beautiful eyebrows. I think that if you will, uh, what you can say that uh, in human structure, if you will do PhD, you cannot describe in such a way. Wafi ashfarihi watafun, wafi sautihi sahnu. When he was speaking, he had a very commanding speech. And commanding speech is also a blessing of Allah. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. If somebody is a great scholar, but he does not have the commanding speech and the commanding voice, so he will speak, people is not listening to him. Because his voice cannot control the gathering. Wa fi sawtihi sahlun. He had a very commanding speech and that's why it is said, Sayyidina Abu Huraira, رضي الله تعالى, that whenever Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam used to start speech, it was a pin drop silence because of Adam of Rasulullah and because of his commanding voice. It was a pin drop silence when Prophet was speaking. And she said that he had a large head, slender, on a very beautiful neck. Ahwar, Akhal. Azadju, Akran, Shadidu, Sabadishah. His hairs were very glossy. Shining hairs. Iza Samata, Arahu Bakar. When he was silent and quiet, dignity was there. Wa in Takalama, Arahu Baha. And when he was speaking, so she said, the pearls were coming out of his mouth. Ajmarun Nas. From far, he was looking very handsome. But from near, he was very sweet. Ya yes, subhanallah, I have never seen such a good comments of anybody about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And especially, that lady at that time, she was not a Muslim. And she said, His words and speech was very sweet. First one, his speech was very distinct from each other. La nadrun, wala hadrun. He was not speaking too long, nor too short. He was not speaking too long because it will make you upset. It will make you tired. Not too short because you will not understand what he says. La nadrun, wala hadrun. Ka anna mantiqahu. When he was speaking, so that was like a glossary broken and the beads and pearls are coming out of its thread. Are it so? And she said, 
لا تقهمه عين من قصر ولا تشنه من طول his body his height that was not too high not too short he was very medium and she said ghusn baina ghusnain he was a twig between the two fa huwa andar salasa and he was the perfect scene amongst the three people all three were nice and they were handsome but he was a perfect one amongst the three and she said wa ahsanu qadran he was a very respectable man lahu rufaqa'un yuhaffun bihi his companions they were surrounding him from all around is aqala istama'u li qawli when he was starting his speech everyone was listening to him very attentively wa idha amara tabadaru ila amri when he asked for something they were competing each other to do that his companions mahfudun mahshudun he was a master and he was a commander la abis wala mufannid i have not seen him saying or showing any attitude to any one of his companions and respected brothers and sisters what a perfect uh, uh, comments Sayyida Umm Ma'bad al-Khuzaiyya radiyallahu ta'ala now to second it with the comments of Sayyidina Ali radiyallahu and as you know that Abu Talib he was the chief but he was very generous guy he was spending a lot and he had so many children Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam once said to Abbas his uncle and the brother of Abu Talib that we should take care of at least one one of his sons abba said that's very good so he took aqil and prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam brought ali his first cousin ali he was a young man he brought him respected brothers and sisters in islam he was living with rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam since his childhood and when he accepted islam he was only 20 years of age because when he saw that inside the room Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam is praying his liberated slave Zaid ibn Haritha is praying his wife Khadija is praying so when Zaid ibn Haritha came out Ali approached him and asked him what's going on he said you don't know he said no i don't know he said do you know that allah is sending an angel to muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam allah pointed him as a messenger and as a prophet so we have accepted his message so ali asked Zaid ibn Haritha Can you please take me to him to accept his message? Let's go. So he brought him. Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. He took his hand and put it in his right hand. Say, Ashhadu Allah ilaha illallah wa Ashhadu anna Muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluhu. Ali said it when he was 12 years of age, and that's why he was proud. He has a book in poetry. He was a very nice poet. Say na Ali. That's called Diwan Ali ibn Abi Talib. I found it here somewhere in a, in a bookstore. ديوان علي بن ابي طالب رضي الله تعالى عنه ثاني هاو دي سيد سبقتكم على الاسلام تو محمد النبي اخي وسهري وحمزه سيد الشهداء عمي هي واز سيتنج وذ صحابه سو هي واز تيلينج ذيم ذات محمد النبي اخي وسهري محمد دي ميسنجر هي از ماي برادر بيكوز هي از ماي فرست كازن وسهري اند هي از ماي فادر ان لا از ويل وحمزه سيد الشهداء عمي and hamza sayyid al-shuhada who is sayyid al-shuhada hamza yes every shaheed is respectable but this title was given by rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam to whom hamza to hamza radhiyallahu ta'ala anhu wa hamza sayyid al-shuhada e ammi and hamza sayyid al-shuhada the head of the martyr in the path of allah the chief of the martyr of the path in the path of allah the king of the martyr in the path of allah he is my uncle sabaqtukum ala al-islam at-tur i have a quality you people don't have it So Sahaba were looking at Ali. That what that quality? He said, "Sabiyan, no balak to awan halmi." I accepted the message of Muhammad when I was a boy. I had not yet aware the age of puberty. I was not a boy when I was twelve or less than twelve years of age. I said, "Shabbat Allah ilaha illallah wa shabbat anna Muhammad al abduhu wa rasul." So anyhow, my respected brothers, Sayyidina Ali says, "Lam yakun bi tawil al mamurat." Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم was not very tall. ولا بالقصير المتردد نار تو شارت وكان ربعة من القوم هي واز ا ميديم بيرسون ولم يكن بالجعد القطط ولا بالسبت 
his hairs of head were not wavy, very straight, not curly. Not, but in between the two, Kana Jadan Rajilan, Jadan Rajilan mean it was going straight and in the end it was curly. And then he said, Walam Yakun bin Mutaha. His face was not swollen. Wala bil mukarsam, not too meaty and fatty. Wakana fil washi tadweel. And his face was fairly round. Wakana apiazu musharraban bil humra. His complexion was white with redness in his cheek. Sayyidina Anas radiallahu ta'ala anu said, When you were sitting in front of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and looking at his cheek, Ka'annama fi wajnatehi al-waradhan. Ka'annama fi wajnatehi al-waradhan. You were thinking that maybe somebody has put red roses in his cheeks. So Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala anu said, Wa kana abyazu musharraban bil humra ad'ajar ayneen. He had very large eyes, ahdaf al long hair eyelids, jalil al-mishash wal katil. His giants were very strong, and the, 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 the distance between his two shoulders was very much. Means he was a very brave person and a very strong personality. Daqiq al and he had some hair starting from his chest towards his belly button. But his entire body that was very clean and neat from any type of hair, Shasir al His palms and fingers were very, very strong. Wal Qadameen. His toes were strong as well. Izama Shah. Taqallaka anna ma yinhattu min sawabin. When Prophet ﷺ was walking. So he was not walking like. Like this. Mashaka annama yin hattu min sababin. Like he is lifting up his feet from mud. He was walking like this. Ah, ka annama yin hattu min sababin. He was looking at the ground like he is coming down up a slippery area. And that was his tawazo. That was his humbleness. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala said, Is al-tafata? Il-tafata ma'ad. When he was talking to someone, he used to turn to him completely. Because this is also a type of takabbur and a type of uh, pride. If somebody asks you, yes, what is it? Huh, what is it? This is not good. If somebody is talking to you, yes, brother, what you say? That's what Rasulullah used to do with each and every one. Is al tafata, il tafata man, bain a katifeh khatam nabuwa. Sayyidina Ali radiallahu ta'ala says, and between his two shoulders there was the seed of nabuwa. And Sayyid ibn Yazid, رضي الله تعالى عنه. Sayyid ibn Yazid, he said, ذهبت بخالتي إلى النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم. That my khala, my auntie, took me to the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم. I was a small baby. So Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم put me in his laps. And then I was playing with the body of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. As you know that small babies, what they are doing. So I came to the back of Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم. I saw the khatm al-nubuwa. Later on I found that the thing which I had seen that was khatm al-nubuwa. And what was that? That was just like the Beetul Hamam, like the pigeon egg. The pigeon, Aleha Thaari, you know the words. It was just like words. Maktubun fihi Muhammadur Rasulullah. It was written there in these words of Muhammadur Rasulullah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And to tell you one story in the end, and that is that once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa when he was in his uh, last days before his going towards Allah or before his death so he asked Ali and Abbas to take him to the member he came there and he addressed the people and then he said if I owe somebody anything he should ask me here on the day of judgment I will not be having anything I will be in trouble even though I tried to my best to repay back whatever I have taken from anybody Jabir ibn Abdullah says that I sold a camel to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa on credit. Loan. On credit. So he said, فَأَعْدَانِي وَزَادَنِي On the appointed date when I came to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he gave me the money and he gave me the double of that as Ihsan. They take it. You need it. Yes, if that is not fixed in the contract, then that is not considered as riba or as interest. For example, if I will give you these uh, uh, glasses of mine on credit for $1,000 not less. And uh, later on you will give me on the appointed date 1000 of this and 2000 extra. I will be there for you. Yes, Prophet used to do like this. So anyhow, he said, if I owe somebody anything, please ask me. 
So everybody said, oh, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you repaid everything, but more than that to each and everyone. But one sahabi, his name is Wakash ibn Mahsan radiallahu ta'ala an. He stood up and he said that you owe me something, but that is not uh, financial or something. That is physical. First lesson is worth it. He said that all oh, the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the battle of Badr or Uhud, you were making the road straight. I was because my belly is a little bit uh, buggered out. Yes, so you hit me and you were sick from my back. That to be straight in line. So you owe me that. I want Kesas, the retribution. Prophet said, Okay, that's good. Thank you a lot because you asked me and you reminded me that I have done to you like this. So he asked Bilal to bring a stick. So he brought a stick. Sayyidina Abu Bakr approached him, Please forgive him. He cannot move. He is that sick and that weak now. Sayyidina Umar said, First, he was making a request to him. He said, that I will see that how you will do that. Because you know the nature of Umar. Osman offered him a bunch of money that please take it but don't do that to the Prophet if he said it why you are retributing him Bukash Ibn Mahsan says Prophet he noticed what's going on Bukash said sir everybody is asking me to forgive him leave him that's his due right yes he has all the right to take his retribution in Kisas so he said to the Prophet that oh the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that part of my body because my kameez and shirt was torn so that was open at that time and you hit me there. So Prophet said to Bilal that bring my kameez up and make it open. So when it got open, Wakash ibn Mahsan radiallahu ta'ala no, he rushed to the seal of Nubuwa, to Khatam al Nubuwa and he sucked it like Yes, and he threw away his eye and he broke in tears that like, oh the messenger of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we don't like to have a thorn in your foot how I, somebody can expect from me that I will hit you but I was looking for that Prophet sallallahu told him that congratulations oh gosh you got into Jannah because you sucked it